Bokertov, good morning. I will do my typical greeting to you and already many of you uh, here that are in here early for the Bible study uh, know the response. So I will say to you, Shalom Aleichem, and you say? Shalom. Very good, thank you. Well, today we're going to finish our seventh or our seven-week series on discipleship. And um, with regards to finishing this series, through my prayer, I really wanted to make sure that the agenda was the Lord's and not my agenda. And with respect to that, um, we're going to do some very unique things this morning. I'll be taking you to Israel, and uh, because the lessons that I actually wanted to do, I did on site where the events happened. And I thought that would be more appropriate to teach the lesson rather than here with PowerPoint to actually take you there to Israel, to those specific places. One of the things that I wanted to bring up before we get started this morning, and that's this. When people uh, ask you or when people question and say, what is Light of Menorah? What does John Ferret teach? What is this ministry all about? A lot of people might say, oh, he's a messianic uh, teacher and he teaches the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. If you say that, you are partially right, but mostly wrong. Okay? Um, the Hebrew heritage of the faith, the Jewish roots of our faith, the history, archaeology, is not an end in itself. Okay? That's not the end. When you actually take a look at our ministry, you will find out that what we're doing is this. We agree with Martin Luther when he said this, sol scriptus, I think that's pro the proper way of perhaps saying that in Latin. Martin Luther said, the scriptures and the scriptures alone. However, what I want to get at is this, and I get a lot of people that come to me and say, John, all we need is the Bible. All we need is the Bible alone. I agree with them. But it's not written in English. And Jesus didn't speak in Greek. He spoke in Hebrew. So with that in mind, now you can see what we're attempting to do, yes? We're trying to get behind. We have never had the tools that we have today. I, ladies and gentlemen, you can't believe what's available to you once you start getting deeper into this study. The Bible alone, you better believe it. But now, Jew and Gentile alike, like never before, are coming together so that we're able to understand Jesus as a Jewish rabbi and understand what he had to say and what he did. What is a disciple? As we end off today, you cannot understand what a disciple is unless you go back to the culture of 2,000 years ago. To understand what it means, you're going to see that as we end off today. You're already beginning to see it. So ladies and gentlemen, with regards to this ministry, Light of Menorah, what I'm after <laughs> is that you walk deeper in your faith with Jesus Christ. Period. If you don't like the Hebrew heritage and you don't like the archaeology and the history and say, I really don't like those classes John teaches, I don't care. Whatever Jesus will do to help you walk deeper with him is what I'm after. Amen? Amen. So if you don't like archaeology, fine. He loves you and he is after you. And one way or another, he's going to get you. You got it? And it's got nothing to do with my, my ministry and nothing with my lessons or whatever. So if anybody comes to you and says, Light of Menorah is that messianic ministry and they teach the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. No! I teach the gospel. And I want you to go deeper in your walk with Yeshua, our Messiah, our Savior. Amen? As we take a look at the Hebrew heritage of our faith because never before in the history of mankind do we have the tools to be able to actually study that? So I wanted to let you know that because I'm so passionate about that. And so passionate about what I'm going to finish with you today. So let's go into Disciples in the Days of Messiah, Lesson 7. 
And again, during those days, when they would have Bible study, when they would go into to study the Torah, they would always do a blessing. So please repeat after me. Some of you way back there may not be able to read some of the Hebrew. So I would appreciate if you would read after, uh, please repeat after me. And we will say the blessing before we get into his word. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaCholam. Ashir Bakar Banu. Mikol HaHamim. Veinatan Lanu. Et Torato. Veinevuim. Hatovim. Veinatan Lanu. Et Habrit. Chadasha. Veinatan Lanu. Et Habesora. Mashiach. Baruch Hata Adonai. Noten, Hadevarim, Imet. And in English, please repeat after me again for those of you that may not be able to see it back there. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all people and given us his Torah and the good prophets and given us the new covenant. And given us the good news of Messiah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the words of truth. Now, very quickly, uh, this is a little advertising, okay? Um, and you'll say, why do they advertise when they don't sell anything? Okay? Um, why do they advertise when John Ferret makes no money at this whatsoever? I have to be like my rabbi. You learned this last lesson. Rabbi Jesus had a job. He was a carpenter. Actually, he probably wasn't, okay? But that's another story. He probably was a stonemason. He has a job. That's how he makes his money. He cannot make money by teaching the Torah. I have to be like my rabbi. I have no salary. The Lord has really showed me that I must be the model if I'm going to be in this thing called Light of Menorah and try to help people become disciples. Now... Our website, I want you to understand, <laughs> this has got so much there, and I hope that you'd be able to go there, use it to study. I am a teacher, I am not an academic. So therefore, when you go there, I, you'll hear me say things like, one historian suggests that, or another historian implies that this might be true. I'm just trying to give you where we are in terms of the actual study of the Bible. And so when we do this, this is teaching, and what I happen to uh, have the privilege of is having people like yourself go to the website, go to these lessons, listen to the audio and video, and then email me with a, a things that I missed or ideas that I've never considered before. So lightofmenorah.com is the website. When you go there, this is what the homepage, not the homepage, looks like. You click on the menorah, and when you click on the menorah, you will go to the next page, which looks like this, got a lot of information, but I want you to see the picture in the upper right-hand corner. In the upper right-hand corner, it says free, like no charge, online classroom. Everything I have taught, everything, including this lesson, things in Israel, Turkey, Hebrew heritage too, which I teach here on Thursday nights, it's all there. All the audio, all the PowerPoint, all the notes, free. So you could actually do Bible study at home. This is not limited to the fact that you're just coming to Emmaus on Thursday nights. But in that upper right-hand corner, that's the critical place, because if you actually click in the upper right-hand corner where it says free online classroom, you're going to come to this next page, and it says, what would you like to study? Now, in the right-hand side, where you'll see this building with all the pillars, that's where all of the classes are. Okay, they take hours and 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 hours. Okay, they're broken up into 30 minute segments that would be more appropriate for a home study. On the left hand side are individual lessons. I'm going to suggest to one of them to you today because it's appropriate. I did a lesson here. Pastor Tom asked me to preach and teach on Holy Communion from the Jewish perspective. So that was last year sometime. It was called We Shall Dance. And was talking about communion where Jesus was asking us to marry him. Remember that? 
to go to a deeper, intimate relationship with him. That's in there. It's called We Shall Dance. But in the middle are all the videos. So you can see a cave in there, which is Caesarea Philippi. And if you actually clicked on the cave, you'll come to two options, one on the left and one on the right. These are all the videos. The discipleship class, this class is on the right-hand side. All, everything, this class is available with a lot of handouts. Uh, whoops. Something just clicked. Am I okay? I think I'm okay, right? But at any rate, with regards to that, that's where the discipleship series is and many other videos. On the left-hand side are videos from Israel. And that's where I'd like to take you today. This is the menu for Israel. What's your menu? When you go to Israel, you want to study the Bible? What's your menu? Uh, the country? The geography? Pick a region. So we've got a number of regions there. We'll, God willing, we'll be adding to this as time goes by. What I'm going to do is pick on the Galilee region today. And in the Galilee region, you'll see pictures all around the area of the Galilee. And today, we're going to center on one area. We're going to take a look at two videos. They're very short. But they're related to the concept of disciple. And so we're going to go to Abel Mechola. And I'll let myself speak from Abel Mechola, from that site there in the Jordan Valley, about 25 miles south. And hang on just for a second, Mike, before we do that. I just one, one other thing I do is that once I click on, whoops, once I click on the, there we go, you would actually click on the video for Abel Mahoy. You can see the videos in the top left-hand corner. The other thing I want to bring up is a toolbox. If you want to study further about Abel Mehola, if you want to study further about Elijah and Elisha, you go to the toolbox. If you click on the toolbox, there are links that will take you to many different places on the internet. They're not my sites, but this is where I study. This is where I get my information. I might even have lists of books there. I normally am in the library. I usually don't use the internet that much. I'm a library guy. I really like books, okay, to actually do my study. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on the videos there. And really, I call this study today, in Hebrew, please repeat after me. I think you'll appreciate the Hebrew. Ha akarit shel harisha. That means the beginning of the end. And then, please, please repeat after me. Ve harisha shel ha akarit. And the end of the beginning. I want to take you to Abel Maloha to the rabbis where they say the Rabbi Talmud model started. I want to take you to a biblical site where it happened. Shalom Aleichem. We're here in the Jordan River Valley, in the Great Rift Valley, not far from the crossing at Adam and Wadi Faria, where Abraham would have crossed when he first came here. And it's pretty obvious that you can take a look behind me. And those of you that are familiar with some of the lessons that we taught or have been to Israel, this is a tell. And this tell is called Tel Mehola. However, we don't know whether this is one, the actual Tel Mehola, or there could be a couple of others on the other side, but it seems to be the likely candidate for Tel Mehola. And I'll explain to you what that Tel is all about as we begin a series. You guys, we're going to begin a series with this lesson. The next lesson will be at Bethsaida. After that, at Chorazin, Capernaum, and so on, we're going to be talking about the concept of discipleship. What is the concept of discipleship? Especially in this land when Jesus says, go and make disciples. Here at Albel Mehola, this is supposedly the town, or this would be the supposed tell, if this is the correct one, this would be the area of Elisha's hometown and we have the story of Elijah 
if you recall, he was up out Mount Carmel, which is going to be probably, oh, maybe 50 miles north and west of here through the Jezreel Valley and close to Haifa today. But the thing is, you remember, they had the encounter with the, Be the priest of Baal. And then Elijah flees. He goes down to supposedly Sinai. And then the Lord finally ministers to him. He gets up. And God commands him to do something which is very interesting. So we'll go to the text. And in the text... We're in 2 Kings, actually 1 Kings, chapter 19. And this is right after Elijah is at Sinai. Starting in verse 15, the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. I like that phrase. We're going to start with the lesson, go. He's telling Elijah to go. It's time to get up. You've had your rest. It's now time to go and continue your ministry. Go. On your way to the wilderness of Damascus, when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazael king over Aram, and Jehu the son of Nimshi you shall anoint king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola. So this is really awesome to be at this site. I think you can see not too many tourists stop here because they probably don't know what it is. Like I said, this is the likely place. There are a couple of others on the other side of the Jordan River. But this is the likely place. And you shall anoint as prophet in your place. So in other words, God is saying to Elijah, somebody is coming after this. I want Elisha to be your disciple so that he can continue on in your name later on. So he departs from there in verse 19 as we pick up the story. And from there he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, while he was plowing with 12 pairs of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. So we're looking at a field, and we ask ourselves the question, if we're at Abel Mehola, or maybe is it over there in the Jordan, is this a likely field that he was at, or maybe the field over there? But we're in the area. The actual modern town of Mehola is right down the road. So we know this is the spot. And again, we're looking at a potential place of where Elisha's hometown was. But imagine, if you would, he's got 12 pairs of oxen, 24 oxen, 12 pairs, and he's plowing. And I tell you, you need 24. If you look at this ground, this is not Iowa, ladies and gentlemen. This is not Minnesota. Pastor Rod is with us. He's never seen so many rocks in his life. This is the rocky ground. You need 24 oxen to plow this land. There's no way you can have one ox. There's, it is just hard as a rock. And so I could just see him here, and all of a sudden Elijah shows up and basically throws his mantle on him. And Elisha left his oxen and ran after Elijah, and he says, Please let me kiss my mother and father when I follow you. And Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? Now, this gets very interesting in that story because Elijah's coming, putting his mantle over Elisha, which is a signal, which is an ancient way of saying, you are now to be me. I'm taking you under my authority. Elijah's basically saying, without even saying it, when I die, you have to take over my prophet work, my work for the Lord. And Elisha is basically saying, um, you know, this is all well and good. But I probably should go back to town. I should probably go to my mom and my dad. And I probably should say to them, listen, mom, dad, uh, Elijah just picked me as his disciple. Uh, I wanted to kiss you goodbye. I wanted to pick up my, uh, my MP3 player. And I wanted to pick up my new uh, backpack. I didn't expect this. And then I'll go with Elijah. 